In today's video, we're going to talk about the Tartarian civilization, the lost empire of Tartaria. And while this is still a huge debate among many people, some that believe its existence and others that believe it was a fairy tale. And I assume if you're here, it's either because you do believe in the civilization or you're very curious to know if it's true and welcome. I will definitely be showing lots of pictures, so make sure you're paying attention to the screen. It's going to show you a lot of information about the Tartarian civilization and old maps and many other things, including the mud floods. So we'll start out with, once upon a time, there was a highly advanced civilization. It was known as the Great Tartaria, but she has disappeared from our history books less than a century ago. Still today, we see remnants of the Tartarian civilization everywhere. The Tartarian civilization dominated technologies, and we can see this throughout history, and beautiful buildings of the civilization is still present on every continent to this day. This one world Tartarian to 1200 AD dovetails the creation of the trilateral New World Order founding of the Vatican, the City of London, and Washington, D.C., the United States is defined as a federal corporation under the U.S. Code 3002, Section 15. The Virginia Company was turned into the United States during the Revolutionary War. The Virginia Company was issued by the British Royal Family from the City of London Corporation for North American Settlements. In 1213, King John surrendered the Kingdom of England to the Holy See under the Golden Bull. In 1215, King John issued the Magna Carta, which in Latin means the Great Charter, that established the one-mile square block called the City of London Corporation as a sovereign entity from England and London. The Vatican uses Latin as its official language, and the Holy See uses Latin for all official documents. And we see this with the United States Great Seal on the $1 bill and on coins. Novus Ordo Selectrum. I believe that's right. I'm not great at Latin. <laughs> and it is Latin and translates to New Order of Ages. If you look closely at the dollar bill, there is so much symbolism in just this dollar bill. The all-seeing eye, the pyramids. It almost seems like a kind of like what we think, that there was electricity during this time. It's illuminating at the top and a lot of symbolism. Like I said, definitely check out your dollar bill if you haven't. Most people have at this point and have paid attention to these things for a very long time, but I still find all symbolism very interesting. And let's not forget that Washington, D.C. is located in both Virginia and Maryland, and it's known as the Virgin Mary Land. And did you know that D.C. was originally called Rome in 1669, which is stated in the Catholic Encyclopedia? D.C. has Roman architecture and has Roman symbols all over its federal buildings and seals. Capitol Hill is named after Capitone, Capitone Hill in Rome. And I've shared a few photos to show you what I mean by the D.C. area having a lot of Roman architecture within it. And growing up, I was always one of those people that looked at these old buildings in several countries and just found them so beautiful and mesmerizing. The detail that went into them, um, the absolute beauty and marvel of it all. And of course, growing up in the U.S., I look around and see plain buildings with no beauty, character, nothing fascinating to me at all and I've always been very disappointed about that. And now we can add some credibility to the existence of Tartarians also. There is a CIA document declassified in 1998 and created in 1957 about the conspiracy to eliminate the Tartarians. I've also added that to the screen so you guys can read through it. Very interesting for a civilization that many claim did not exist. In 1961, an archaeologist, Nikolai Vlasa, I believe I said that right, hopefully I did not butcher that, discovered what may be direct evidence of the earliest form of writing in the world. While conducting an excavation 
at the Neolithic site in Romania. His team discovered three small clay tablets containing etchings. These are now known as the Tartaria tablets. They have been varying interpretations of the meaning of these etchings and continue to be. And I'm definitely one of those people that truly believe that there's a lot more to our story than meets the eye. And I also believe that everything intertwines. We just can't make a lot of sense of it because we've been lied to in history. And if we could ever put together these pieces, everything would make so much more sense for us, where we originated from, and what's going on around us. I think a lot of the things that we see going on with our government and other countries throughout our days are directly linked to our history. And I'm one of those people that love investigating to find out more. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is the mud floods. And of course, the mud flood evidence is worldwide. I would completely agree with that. I remember when I first started looking into this going, I don't know what to believe. And I'm a firm believer that we should question everything. We should research it. We should never follow anyone blindly with any theory or thought. And I remember something I was told growing up, and I still stand by this today in every year of my life. Believe nothing that you hear and half of what you see. Now, that might sound a little silly, but think about it. Our eyes play tricks on us, so some of the things that we think we see may not be exactly what they are. And that's been shown time and time again throughout history and in our daily lives. Also, you should never believe anything you hear, not unless you've researched it yourself. We're all very smart people that can do our own research and come to our own conclusions. I'm just here to shed a little bit of light into the mud flood theory and show you there's clear evidence to at least give it a chance. Look into it for yourself and tell me what you think. And if you disagree, that's fine too. But... I will be doing a video on just mud floods because there's so much information on this and as many of you know if you watch my channel that I like to keep videos to the point on one topic so it's easy for anyone to follow and not get bored throughout the video. I don't want anyone just sitting here going I'm so bored and I really love this picture that's showing right now because it clearly shows that some of this building is buried underneath and there's so many pictures like this that you can research. But anyways, I do like to keep my videos short and just wanted to touch on a few topics about the mud flood and clearly what we see to be antennas and ways to get electricity and many other things in old photos. And even though we see these, we only look at the bigger picture and not the details sometimes. And I think now it's our job to go back and look at those details and find for ourselves what we believe and what may have existed that history has written out or just doesn't want to talk about and then question why that is. And my next video will definitely be on mud floods and I'm also going to do a video about electricity during that time separately. Like I said, I usually start try to stick to one topic and on this one talking about Tartarians and especially for those who have never heard of this or are new to it, I want to give you a variety of what you're looking at here in this video, but I will dive deeper into these topics on the next videos. And just look at how things are identical. Um, the World Fairs have a lot to do with this as well as to this old architect, and I have done a few videos on those, and there's still so much to talk about. But I really do enjoy these videos, and thank you so much for watching, and I will definitely see you next time.